Racers want to be in the zone. Remember we talked about mental transparency. They want to be able to feel those rubber rudders. They want to float up to the limit. And so what ends up happening is when a driver gets fatigued, they can't feel the limit is great. And so what ends up happening is they end up resorting to power steering. Trust me when I say this. Drivers want manual, race car drivers want manual steering. Okay? Now, power steering uses the smaller muscles in the hands. Remember we talked about the, the proprioceptor sweet spot? Well, you do have a sweet spot in your hand as well because the smaller muscles are here. You see that? You got it here and here. And if you have power steering, what ends up happening is you design the cockpit so that it's ideal so that those muscles, the smaller muscles, and those are what we call the slow twitch muscles. Those are the ones that are more positional in nature as opposed to pressure, which happens closer to the core of the body. So now what we've done is we need to figure out a way to design the grip for power steering. Okay? You want to improve the tactile feedback. If you look at your hand, if you work with your hands, you have calluses right here. The nerves in the hand run right down the bottom, excuse me, on either side. So what you do, in between your fingers, you have extra sensitivity because you don't have calluses. And the nerves are right there, and the nerves branch out, so you've got a lot of nerve area density in this area. So what you do is you fill the area with... Uh, with material, you know, information transmitting material. So we've got the slow twitch muscles which have their own uh, sweet spot. <coughs> We're providing uh, additional torque for input in case the steering system fails. Because remember, you have 90 degrees of waste when we're talking the friction paradigm. So when you can now deeply flute a power steering steering wheel, the driver can really relax their grip. The ergonomics in the cockpit now are ideally set up to use the slow twitch more positional muscles, and we're talking about the parietal lobe at this point as opposed to the cerebellum. And this is an example showing you what we've got in this. Okay, the trade-offs, power steering. <coughs> Obviously low force, drivers are finally silent. They're not complaining to the team, come on man, do something. Now we've got the slower slope, the more kinesthetic, meaning positional. That's how your, the feedback is. And the parietal lobe is right here in the back, right on the bald spot. You see that? Okay, so then we've got uh, lower bandwidth, though, because you're not using the fast twitch muscles, which react quicker. Okay? But, but the human being is very good at adapting. Finally, we have higher consequences and increased probability of failure because you simply have more parts on the car. And when you're racing, you're racing to failure. You're racing to the limit. And parts fail, unlike uh, uh, you know, passenger cars. They're not stressed as much. Manual steering, high force. You can see that the drivers reach the zone better. The larger fast twitch muscles enter the equation more. You're dealing with what are called the mechanical uh, receptor pressure control. In other words, when you have uh, power steering, sorry, manual steering, the steering wheel is a pressure control. When the driver's going into the turn, he's feeling pressure. Where when you have power steering, it's more positional in nature. And we have quicker ratios. 